Imagine a world on the brink of chaos. Nations poised for conflict, alliances forming and dissolving, an atmosphere of tension and uncertainty. This was Europe in the early 20th century, on the precipice of World War I, a time when the world was about to be plunged into a conflict of an unprecedented scale, fueled by a complex web of factors. The rise of nationalism and imperialism, the escalating arms race, the intricate alliances and diplomatic tensions all played their part. And at the heart of it all, the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria-Hungary, a spark that ignited the powder keg and set off a chain reaction leading to the Great War. A war that would reshape the world and leave a lasting impact on generations to come. So, buckle up and join us on this journey as we unravel the intricate tapestry of events that led to the outbreak of the First World War. Let's delve into the fascinating, intricate tapestry of events that led to the outbreak of the First World War. National pride and the thirst for global dominance, two powerful forces that fueled the flames of conflict. As the 19th century gave way to the 20th, nations across Europe were gripped by a wave of nationalism. This potent sentiment was not confined within borders. It spilled over, leading to territorial disputes and fostering an atmosphere of competition. At the heart of nationalism was the belief that one's nation was superior to all others. This belief was often tied to ethnicity, culture or historical achievement, and it stirred deep-seated emotions. It drove nations to assert their dominance and protect their interests, sometimes at the expense of their neighbors. Imperialism, too, was a significant factor. Europe's powerful nations were in a race to extend their reach, eager to establish colonies and control resources. Britain, France, Germany and others were all players in this high-stakes game, each seeking to outdo the others. The scramble for territories outside Europe especially in Africa and Asia, added fuel to the fire. It created rivalries and disputes, further straining relationships among these powers. The intersection of nationalism and imperialism was particularly volatile. Nations driven by national pride were determined to expand their empires, intensifying the competitive atmosphere. It was a dangerous mix, a cocktail of ambition and rivalry that could easily ignite conflict. This competition was not just about land or resources. It was also about prestige, about demonstrating one's power on the global stage. The more territory a nation controlled, the more it could flex its imperial muscles, reinforcing its position as a world leader. But as we'll see, this game of one-upmanship had serious consequences. As nations pursued their interests with fervor, the stage was set for a clash of ambitions. Their aggressive stances and territorial ambitions created a powder keg of tension, ready to explode. And when the match was finally struck, it would ignite a war unlike any the world had seen before. The drumbeats of war echoed across Europe as nations bolstered their military might. The late 19th and early 20th centuries were marked by a dramatic arms race, spurred by advances in technology and a pervasive sense of nationalism. This era, characterized by militarism, saw nations amassing weapons and expanding armies at an unprecedented pace, a trend that significantly contributed to the outbreak of World War I. Militarism, at its core, is the belief in maintaining a strong military capability, not only for defense, but also to promote national interests and assert dominance. It was this mindset that set the stage for the frenzied arms race among the European powers. Germany, France, Russia and Britain, in particular, found themselves locked in a dangerous spiral of military expansion, each fearing that falling behind could spell disaster. The naval rivalry between Britain and Germany offers a stark illustration of this. Britain, an island nation, had long held a commanding lead in naval power, but Kaiser Wilhelm II of Germany was determined to challenge this supremacy, sparking a costly and tense naval arms race. But it wasn't just about ships and guns. The arms race also extended to technological innovation. Countries raced to develop superior weapons, and military planning became a science. This led to the creation of detailed war plans, which, once set in motion, were difficult to stop. 
further escalating the risk of conflict. Moreover, the readiness of these armies and their advanced weaponry created a sense of invincibility, a dangerous illusion that war could be swift and decisive. This overconfidence, coupled with the belief that not using their military strength would be a sign of weakness, made countries more willing to resort to war. So we see that militarism and the arms race didn't just prepare nations for war, they made war seem inevitable. The spectre of conflict loomed large, casting a long, ominous shadow over Europe. With arsenals stocked and armies primed for battle, the fuse was lit for a devastating conflict. A single shot in Sarajevo and the world was catapulted into war. This is the tale of the tragic day of June 28, 1914, when Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria-Hungary found himself in the crosshairs of history. The Archduke, next in line to the Austro-Hungarian throne, was visiting Sarajevo with his wife, Sophie. Their visit, however, ended in disaster when a young Bosnian Serb nationalist, Gavrilo Princip, fired the fatal shots that claimed their lives. The assassination was more than a shocking event. It was a spark that ignited a powder keg of political and military tensions simmering across Europe. Austria-Hungary was quick to blame Serbia and issued an ultimatum, one that Serbia could not fully accept. The refusal set off a domino effect, with alliances and treaties pulling one nation after another into the fray. In the wake of this tragic event, diplomatic tensions reached a boiling point, pushing nations over the edge. In a world of shifting allegiances, alliances were both a shield and a sword. This was never more evident than in the turbulent years leading up to World War I, where a complex system of alliances played a significant role in shaping the course of history. At the heart of this system were two opposing blocs, the Triple Entente and the Triple Alliance. The Triple Entente, composed of France, Russia and the United Kingdom, was formed as a counterweight to the increasing power of the Triple Alliance, which united Germany, Austria-Hungary and Italy. These alliances were not just diplomatic handshakes. They were binding contracts, obligating members to come to each other's aid in the event of an attack. They were designed to preserve the balance of power in Europe and deter potential aggressors. However, the strength of these alliances also lay in their ambiguity. The terms were often vague and open to interpretation, leading to uncertainty and tension. In a world already bristling with militarism and nationalistic fervor, this ambiguity was a dangerous game to play. And play it they did. When Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria-Hungary was assassinated in 1914, the dominoes began to fall. Austria-Hungary declared war on Serbia, triggering Russia to mobilize in defense of its Slavic brethren. Germany, bound by its alliance with Austria-Hungary, declared war on Russia. France, in turn, was drawn in by its commitment to Russia, and Germany's invasion of Belgium brought the United Kingdom into the fray. What began as a regional conflict escalated rapidly into a global war, thanks to this intricate web of alliances. The very system designed to maintain peace instead amplified the conflict, turning a spark into an inferno that swept across the world. The alliances of World War I serve as a stark reminder of the double-edged nature of such agreements. While they can deter aggression and preserve peace, they can also escalate conflicts far beyond their original scope. These alliances, meant for protection, became the chains that dragged nations into a global conflict. In a world teetering on the brink, diplomacy was the last hope for peace. Yet, this delicate art of negotiation faltered at the most crucial of times. The diplomatic stage, poised to prevent catastrophe, instead became a theater of failures and missed opportunities. Egos clashed and nations postured, while the specter of war loomed ever closer. In the lead-up to the Great War, diplomatic efforts were marred by miscommunication, misunderstanding and an underestimation of the looming crisis. The July Crisis of 1914, following the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand, witnessed a series of diplomatic blunders, each misstep 
Each miscalculation further entangled the nations in a web of conflict from which there was no escape. The diplomatic landscape of the era, riddled with secret treaties and alliances, contributed significantly to the inevitability of war. Missteps and miscalculations on the diplomatic stage served as the final nails in the coffin of peace. World War I, a global conflict that forever altered the course of history. As we've explored, the seeds of this devastating conflict were sown by a complex mix of nationalism, imperialism, militarism, and a tangled web of alliances. The spark that ignited this powder keg was the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand, an event that set off a domino effect of diplomatic failures and declarations of war. The impact of World War I was far-reaching and its consequences resonate even today. It reshaped the geopolitical landscape, leading to the fall of empires, the rise of new nations and the stage set for an even more destructive conflict, World War II. The human cost was immense, with millions of lives lost and countless others forever changed. As we reflect on these events, we understand the intricate web that led to the outbreak of World War I. Tune in next time as we explore further into this pivotal era in history. Don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments and subscribe for more historical insights.